Hey there, sorry about the shaky handheld video, sorry about the bad audio, sorry about the fan noise, but this is important. I wanted to get this out before I did any other stuff, so this is going to be very minimal editing. Again, apologies. But I found a problem with one of the potential safety fail safes on the power supply. I will be doing a more detailed investigation of the power supply in the actual series, but this was important enough I wanted to get it up first. So here we go. So forgive me if some of this is review, if people already know about this issue and have diagnosed the exact cause, that's fine, whatever. More information about safety issues, the better. I didn't even bother stopping to check the internet to see what anybody else said, but I thought this was important enough that I would run through it right now before we even get to the rest of the parts of the printer. Also, this is not an Ender supply. This is a supply that is purchased by Ender and put on their printers. So it may be the same case with other model printers from Creality as well as other model printers from other manufacturers as well as printers that you or uh, power supplies that you may buy yourself so make sure you check this first for those of you who watched the live stream you'll remember that i did a uh, test a continuity test and tested all the grounds and the voltages before i plugged anything in because i've been zapped enough by random parts that i know i'm not going to just plug something in and trust that it's going to be okay and i found a little bit of weirdness but not enough to like pull the plug on the whole thing so for the sake of the nice people that showed up to watch the live stream i pressed ahead even though and i think this was my exact quote i'm a little sketched out by this and what I was sketched out by was that I wasn't getting proper continuity between the safety ground and the chassis. As you can see right here, OL means open circuit. Now, I did find out the chassis has some kind of coating on it that insulates, as you can see right here, testing between the ground lug and the chassis, I have no continuity. But if I connect that ground lug to a part of the chassis that doesn't have the coating on it, I do get continuity. So that is one layer of protection, but if you touch a part of the chassis, like where one of the holes is punched and it's exposed, you can still get a zap if there's voltage on the chassis. So what's going on here? Well, this is what it comes down to. If you've ever bought one of these, this is just Hammond Hobby chassis that people buy by the bajillions and just make all kinds of projects in. You know that they have a plastic coating on them to prevent the aluminum from getting scratched while you're building it? So a lot of times people will just drill right through the chassis and then peel it off afterwards, but don't mount components on there if they have to be grounded and then peel off the plastic unless you keep the bolts loose, peel it off, and then tighten them down afterwards. I've seen this a thousand times with people building audio amplifiers, so if you have something like this transformer right here, the bell ends, you want those to be, he, I said bell end, you want those to be grounded, so typically they'll grind the coating off of one of the mounting tabs bottom here, and then bolt that onto the chassis, and you have a ground connection through the tab. Some people mount these through the plastic, and then the plastic insulates it, and you don't have a ground connection to the bells on your chassis or the bells on your transformer, whatever. So knowing that, I looked at these press-in tabs right here that are the uh, the headers for the screw or the standoffs for the screws and found out that they pressed those directly through the plastic and that was insulating these from the chassis. So we have to either get continuity from this bolt to the chassis somehow, or we have to run a direct connection with a jumper from our earth ground itself and then pray to the electricity gods that they're not using the chassis to ground return, which I don't think they would be because that Will be a bonehead mistake. As a quick fix on mine, what I decided to do was file this flush, file the uh, the uh, standoff flush with the chassis. I don't care if it looks scratched up like this. And then take a little bit of paper and remove all of the coating around that bolt. Again, I don't really care about the scratches. And then take a toothed washer, mount that with a three millimeter uh, dome head screw on the other side. And then I have continuity between the standoff and the chassis through the toothed washer. And that seemed to work out okay, just as like a quick fix for me. Because as you see right here, probing a part of the chassis doesn't have a coating on it, we have continuity. What I was trying to do was find a quick safety fix for users without having to disassemble it. So while it is possible to do it that way, there's a problem because when you thread that screw in from the one side, you can thread the screw that mounts the board off on the other side. And that connects the um, safety ground through the uh, safety ground on the board and then to the safety ground on the chassis, which is not the best design. Safety grounds usually should be connected directly to the chassis as close as the outlet is possible. So make sure you pull this off and screw that in tight before you do it.
Also, there was nothing to retain this bolt in there, so I put a toothed washer on it because safety ground connects should, should always have a toothed washer on them or something like a lock nut that keeps it in place. And I did check to see, and there doesn't appear to be a ground reference between safety ground and any of the grounds on the board, which is a good thing, so it is a separate circuit. A better option for the average user might just to be uh, take one of these jumpers and screw it right into the terminal with your safety ground and then mount that on a nut directly to the chassis over here. Don't mount it on this side because your plastic case has to go over that and you won't be able to tighten it down. So put it over there and make sure you grind off that coating with a little bit of sandpaper or whatever just to make sure that you can uh, get good solid contact there. And when that's done, as you can see, when I press the pro pointy end of the probe through the coating, we have continuity safe. All right, so that's it for now. Just thought I'd toss that out as soon as I could, and we'll get to the rest of the videos real soon, and I will do a more in-depth uh, investigation of the power supply. As always, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and if you want to support the channel, check out my support links in the video description below. Until the next video, be safe and build something awesome.